Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mystical, and today I have for you something a little bit different than just news. The coming months are going to be absolutely massive for VR and XR in general. Yes, not only VR, but also AR. We have a ton of new headsets to talk about. Leaks, information, release dates, things that are just overall super cool that have happened during the last few days. And most of you probably know, PSVR 2 has been checked out by a bunch of different people. So, as usual, I'm Mystical. If you guys like this one, slap that red button down below and let's get right into it. A ton of things have happened. If you guys haven't checked out my video on the Quest Pro, which I made right up here, that is supposedly coming next month. It's no longer called the Cambria. We now know it's the Quest Pro. We have an unboxing video and we have a bunch of things showing us exactly what the headset is going to look like, how it's going to work and what its possibilities and capabilities are going to be. Only thing that we don't have is release date and price, but other than that, we have pretty much everything. So, ha ha ha, no one's gonna be surprised if they do announce it during Connect. which I mean, they, they supposedly will, let's be honest here, they've been teasing this for a while. What I do, however, find interesting is the fact that the unboxing video was filmed in a hotel room made by someone who found the headset in a hotel room, and everyone in the comments was like, yes, people from hotels are taking a look at your stuff, don't be surprised. I mean, Kind of creepy, but uh, okay. A bunch of people claimed that it wasn't a PR stunt. A lot of people thought it was a PR stunt. And to be honest with you, I have no clue what it was, but I do actually find it kind of sneaky that that came out literally a few days before Sony released uh, their stuff. So we know a lot about the Quest 2 Pro. We've talked about it. Check out this video. I'm not going to talk about it too much in this one. Yeah, let's move on to the big guns, the PSVR 2. Now, the PSVR 2 has been now checked out by a bunch of people, hands-on by the Verge, hands-on by Road to VR, Upload VR. But according to me, something that is really cool and a huge thumbs up, it was checked out by our own Mike from the VR community, from the VR YouTuber community. So thumbs up, Mike. I mean, I have no clue what kind of strings you had to pull to get in there, but good on you, dude. No, but on a serious note, I find it really cool that people from the YouTube community are finally being seen as somebody that can come in, you know, as press, because it, it's mostly press that got a look at this, massive press outlets. And YouTube wasn't always seen as a thing where, you know, creators got to check out devices from massive companies before they came out. I find it really cool that that was the case. So again, massive thumbs up, puts a big smile on my face. But let's talk about the device, as we now know a lot more about it. I mean, we already knew about the 120 hertz, the OLED panels, the controllers, the HD haptics, but now we actually get to see people's reactions to them. So during their state of play event, PlayStation showed off two bigger games. We have Demio and Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Now, while these titles are good, don't get me wrong, I love Demio, we also know from the background that there will be larger titles coming. Because, you know, these games, while they're nice, well, they're good. There will be larger games coming, supposedly. I mean, we know about Horizon, for example. That's going to be an absolutely massive title. And we know that Horizon is coming because press got to try it out as well. But I do personally feel like that is a larger game. Taking a look at the Upload VR article, and I'm taking this one into account because I feel like everything here is just laid out beautifully, and there's like topics and everything. So, you know, of course, links down below, as always. First thing they took a look at is the impressive display and optics. So, of course, it's going to be an impressive display. It's an OLED panel that can run at 120. 20 hertz, and it's going to deliver those beautiful, beautiful true blacks and amazing colors. So, of course, that we already knew. Immersive haptics is something that we've talked about in the past. Of course, you know, you've got the haptic triggers on the PlayStation 5 controller, and that has now been transferred to VR. I feel like that is going to be massively immersive in, like, first-person shooters and places like that. Upload VR does say the high-fidelity vibrations of the controllers let them feel the tension of the string as they pulled back the bowstring in Horizon Call to the Mountain. And the rumble motor in the headset meant that it felt like you were getting hit by enemies. So yes, the headset also has a rumble motor. Again, we know about a lot of these things. Clear pass-through is something I find really, really cool. What's unfortunate is that it's black and white, but I do appreciate the little PlayStation symbol showing up on the ground. Just a little thing, but I appreciate it. Unlike the original headset, the PSVR 2 has onboard cameras, of course, that allow you to see the real world, just like the Quest and all other standalone devices. Upload VR says they didn't notice any distortion here, and it does look a lot more clear than Quest 2 Pass through, for example. So that's really, really cool. Eye tracking guides your fit. This, I personally feel like, is one of the coolest features ever. Because on the PlayStation VR 2, it uses eye tracking to guide you to adjust the lenses perfectly for your interpupillary distance, which is your IPD. This is something I talked about in the last video that I would love to see. 
eye tracking being used to help with IPD. And apparently, PlayStation have implemented that. I find that really cool as IPD is really important to get the best clarity. If you're off on your IPD by a bit, it can ruin your experience. A lot of people know this. And I feel like here, you know, using that eye tracking is just a fantastic idea for this. It's going to make things a lot, lot better for a lot of people that can't set their IPD correctly or can't find the exact right spot. Tracking quality, controllers using LED rings, they're bigger in real life than you're probably assuming. <laughs> Lovely. Headset tracking was mostly solid, but it did wobble a bit. And when they looked at bright lights on the ceiling, they did get the tracking lost message a few times. This is, I feel like, you know, starting off new headset things like this will probably get fixed. Then there was a few issues, which they were told was caused by the PSVR 2's 60 FPS to 120 Hertz reprojection mode. So in case you want to read about the issues, links down below. I can't read all of this or we'd have like a 25 minute long video. Cable and audio, all in all good. Let's move on to the next headset. I guess we're at 10 minutes. I don't know how I do this. A lot of people are asking me about the Pimax 12K X, as that is another, that is a completely next generation headset that of course I have no information on just yet. Their website is live in case you want to check out my video on that check it out right up here but yeah i have no information for you on the pimax 12k x just yet that is a headset that will be coming in the future no new info on it because you know a lot of people are asking i mean i'm interested in it myself so if i have anything that i can let you guys know about i most certainly will you know if i get any emails or something and they tell me that i can tell you i will tell you if they tell me i can't tell you then i won't tell you i think that's a that's a fair trade right there nothing on the pimax 12k x just yet but i do want to mention it as that is another next generation headset that will be coming Again, a lot of just next generation things happening now, which is we're moving up a step. It's not like people were saying the Quest 2 was a 1.2 device. These are 2.0 devices. This is the next leap for VR. Pico Neo 4, we have the Pico Neo 4 leaks. In fact, these are quite large leaks as we have the launch date and teases. A retailer listing teases the design of the Pico Neo 4 and reveals its launch date. The pre-order listing is live on a Chinese online retailer, Tabao. The price is set to 9999 yen or around $1,500. So all of these headsets seem to be around the same price tag, you know, all of them coming in at about that $1,500 mark, which is interesting because instead of being cheaper, they're going up, but we do have inflation now and we have uh, chip shortages and we have a bunch of other things. So to be completely honest with you, I kind of saw this coming, but this is stated to be a placeholder price. Okay. So yeah, this might be a placeholder price, but you know what? To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if that was it. The text states that the final price will be revealed on September 27th. So coming up soon, the list also reveals the headset will come in two models, 128 gigabytes and 256, the most standard thing right now. While ByteDance hasn't officially yet announced the Pico Neo 4, there is already overwhelming evidence for its existence. The company teased a successor to the Pico Neo 3 line when launching it to European consumers in April by stating it will give a 35% discount should there be another product that comes from Pico within the next 12 months. And uh, yeah, now we have some teases. We have some teases on controllers. We have some teases on eye tracking. We have some teases on a bunch of different things that could come from the Pico Pico Neo 4. And everything is kind of pushing towards it supposedly being launched on the 27th of September, which is very, very soon, or at least being announced on that date. And again, it's going to have a lot of features that I find to be next gen. Uh, again, these are all leaks. Nothing can be confirmed 100% unless the company confirms it, but a lot of super, super exciting stuff. So I'm waiting on it. Even if, you know, it's bike dance, which a lot more people are against, uh, you know, I'm excited to see technology moving forward. And it is going to be interesting to have options to, to have that competition be there, you know? Uh, on a completely different note, Meta is adding legs to their avatars. Yes, we now jump to the other side of the ship where something that should have existed for a while hasn't existed. But yeah, Meta is finally adding legs to its third person avatars. During last month's recent Instagram Ask Me Anything session, Meta's CTO, Andrew Ballsworth, was asked about leg tracking. He responded, yeah, we've been made fun of a lot for legless avatars. And I think that's very fair. And I think it's pretty funny. Having legs on your own avatar that don't match your real legs is very disconcerting to people. But of course, we can put legs on other people that you can see, and it doesn't bother you at all. So what they're saying here is, you know, if you look down and your legs aren't following your real legs, it's going to be weird. I mean, yeah, it's weird. But if you put legs on other people and those people can't see their own legs, but you can see their legs, well, it doesn't bother you as much, which makes a lot of sense. So that seems to be what they're going for. So we are working on legs that look natural to somebody who is a bystander because they don't know how your real legs are actually positioned. Makes a lot of sense. It's not true, proper leg tracking, but at least we're getting legs. So that's quite interesting right there. And finally, we have information. A lot of people have been asking me, when is the Meta Connect event actually happening? Well, I have info for you. It's supposedly happening on October the 11th. It's something we can be looking forward 
forward to as you know hopefully a lot of very interesting stuff is going to be announced and we will be live streaming it as we usually do on this channel so in case you don't want to miss that make sure to smack the subscribe button hey i've never done that before we did it today i know i spoke a little bit faster in today's video than i normally do and i do apologize for anybody who that may have uh, been uncomfortable for or you weren't able to understand me correctly if that is the case and i probably should have put this disclaimer at the beginning please use the speed down button in the bottom of the video uh youtube has that feature now where you can slow down a video but i wanted to fit as much as possible in today's video the psvr2 section was very very long but it is one of the most exciting things happening right now and yeah just wanted to fit as much as possible throw all the kind of next generation headsets that we know of into one video unfortunately that wouldn't be possible if i spoke in my normal voice because uh we would take like 25 minutes to make the video but uh yeah, if you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please do let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below, check out our Reddit. I wanna see you posting your spicy memes on there. Thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton, paying my bills, paying my subscriptions, and overall helping me make these videos better. If you guys wanna support the channel, links are down below. And as usual, if you wanna be notified about future content, content? And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.